בשם השם נעשה ונצליח. Hello, אחים יקרים, how are you? We had an amazing question earlier today that's affecting our nation for generations, but especially today uh, in regards to converts, righteous converts, fake converts. And as I always say, every time you look at the weekly parasha, the weekly Torah portion, you'll find the answers. Unfortunately, today we have uh, many people going to different types of conversions, Uh, but not necessarily for the sake of Shemaim, not for necessarily for the sake of Hashem and His Torah, but rather for the sake of convenience uh, and uh, where people are converting uh, through uh, some type of shortcut that uh, has been created by heretics. Either they themselves are heretics or the people that are leading them are. In uh, some cases, you have people going through the uh, conservative or reform so-called Judaism conversions, which based on Allahha are not considered conversions at all. They're considered completely worthless and they are not conversions. Uh, someone that went through a reform or a conservative conversion, whether they paid zero or they paid a million dollars for it, it is not considered a conversion at all. They stayed exactly the same uh, non-Jew as they started, uh, regardless of what they went through, regardless of what they did. Uh, even though technically the conservative uh, conversion has the same or similar process uh, or procedure as the orthodox conversion, it is, uh, since it's being done by heretics, uh, it is not considered based on halakha as an acceptable form of conversion. But may, many people go through that type of conversion because they don't really want to convert for Hashem, they want to convert... Because it's, e- it's an easier route, it's not as stringent, uh, it doesn't obligate you to do mitzvot, and so on. Similar or even worse with reform, but sometimes you have people that go to an orthodox conversion and fool the beddin, fool the rabbis, fool the dayanim, telling them that yes, <coughs> I'm planning on uh, keeping the mitzvot, a woman is planning on being modest, planning on keeping Shabbat, planning on doing the will of Hashem on a daily basis and fulfilling the will of Hashem as He dictated in the Torah that we received over 3,300 years ago on Mount Sinai, and I want to join the nation. And unfortunately, these people sometimes never have the intention to uh, to actually stay religious, and they go through this conversion and uh, go and become secular people. In other cases, you actually have, you know, fake rabbis that actually tell people that they could convert through this conservative or reform and that's the right way or they think that's the modern way so-called modern way and they fool people to believe that they're actually converting when in reality as we just discussed these are not conversions at all but of course sometimes we have righteous converts so what's the difference what does it uh, really take to convert and most importantly what happens to the ones that are converting through orthodox but are not keeping mitzvot so the Torah says in the Shulchan Aruch, which is the critical part of the um, Oral Torah, also something that we received at Mount Sinai. As a matter of fact, some parts of the Oral Torah we received since Adam, and even Noah had it, and Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov had it. The Oral Torah gives us the explanation of all of the mitzvot. In the days past when people were a little less wicked than what they are today, or a lot less wicked than they are today, but still, nonetheless, there were still wicked people. When someone would come to the Bet Din, would come to the rabbis and say that they want to convert. In Yore De'a, Resh Samechet, Alachot Gerim. It says, כשבא להתגייר, אומרים לו, מה ראית שבאת להתגייר, אם אתה יודע שישראל בזמן הזה תכופים, סכופים, מטורפים, ואיסורים באים עליהם, אם אמר יודע אני ואיני כדאי להתחבר עמהם, מקבלים אותו מיד. So this is in יורה דעה, 200, actually section B, and it, uh, in regards to the halachot of גרים, And uh, here it says that if someone comes to the rabbis and says, I want to convert, they tell him, listen, we, you, know, you know that at this time, Am Yisrael is being chased, it's being killed, it's being tortured. What made you uh, want to join us? Because in essence, if right now the way you live, if you 
light fire on Shabbat, nothing happens. It's a, you're allowed. If you want to eat pig, enjoy. If you want to eat shrimp, enjoy. You, there's, no, there's no obligation on you. All you have to do is keep the seven laws of Noah. But if you convert, not only are you going to be obligated to keep Shabbat, as the halacha says, you're not allowed to drive to Shabbat, even if it's the Bikneset. You're not allowed to eat shrimp ever. You're not allowed to eat anything non-kosher, which obviously includes pig, one of the four animals specifically mentioned in the Torah that, were not, that has one sign out of the two signs that a kosher animal has, but it's only there to test us. It's only one of the two signs. It has to have two signs in order to be kosher. But if you eat pig, right now as a goy, right now as a non-Jew, you're allowed. But if you become Jewish, shem you get punished severely. Why would you do that? And on top of all these stringencies that you're adding to your life, all of these laws, you your wife has to dress a certain way, act a certain way, say certain prayers. You yourself have to wake up very early in the morning where it doesn't matter what time you went to sleep at night and you have to wake up in the morning and late feeling. On top of putting all these stringencies, you're also going to be part of a nation that's being chased, that's being tortured, that's pogroms and holocausts. Why would you want to do it? If the non-Jew would have said at that time, Yes, that's the nation I want to be a part of. They accept them on the spot. On the spot. Why? Because someone that's consciously making this decision obviously is a righteous person and is someone that wants to do the will of Hashem. But because of so many fake converts that we've had throughout generations that have created havoc in the Jewish world, the stringency on conversion has become more and more, especially this last generation or two, where it got to a point with some kehilot, some actual congregations, and sects of Judaism completely deny all converts. Now, if you look at the Torah, the special protection and special deal that Hashem gives to a righteous convert, not any convert, but a righteous convert, is mentioned more times in the Torah and it actually considers him, even, or her, more, a higher level than a natural-born Jew. So how could a Keilah reject someone like this? How could a people not, you know, make it more difficult for people to convert? And the reason for that is because it's due to those wicked people that were fake converts. The ones that said that they want to convert through the orthodox way in order to fulfill the will of Hashem but in reality in the back of their mind they knew all along that they did not want to do any of that they just wanted to convert so they could marry the guy so the guy could buy them a new house and you know uh, share his wealth with them or they could just be with the guy and because his parents are forcing him to only marry a Jew they even though they themselves are not exactly religious they want the son to marry a Jew, and he goes through this breezy process of converting, and the reality of it is that day one after the wedding, they be, go back to going to the beach on Shabbat, or the, you know, going to the mixed beach at all, eating whatever they want, acting like whatever they want, and completely ignoring the Torah and the mitzvot that this convert was supposed to do. So first and foremost, we need to understand this. If someone goes through, you know, obviously excluding the conservative and reform, which are never considered anything. So we're going through the orthodox way. If someone goes to, whether a woman or a man goes to a righteous orthodox bed dean, an acceptable bed dean, not just anyone, but an acceptable bed dean that's known around the world, and fools them. Fools them to tell them that, yes, I'm going to keep all these mitzvot, but in reality, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, I'm never going to keep any of these mitzvot. These are not relevant to me. I just want to go through this process and get it over with. That person, you know, part of the conversion would be, dipping, you know, answering questions, which anyone can. It just requires some knowledge, which you could attain. But the actual belief, no one will ever know if you have it or not, other than Hashem and yourself. So... Part of the process after you pass the test is to dip in a mikveh. And spiritually what happens to a righteous person when they dip in the mikveh is they actually receive a new soul. Mamash, a new soul, an actual real soul, a holy soul, 
of part of Am Yisrael, a significant soul, the most special soul in the world, if they're a righteous convert, if they already plan to not keep anything or not keep some things even, where the woman has said, oh yeah, I'm going to convert, but I'm not going to be modest. Oh yeah, I'm going to convert, but kosher is not for me. Or any of those, or Shabbat is not for me. No soul comes down. They could dip into the mikveh and from now until the moon comes back here to visit us. And it could turn into a green color and it still will never happen. Why? Because Hashem knows your heart. As we say, as part of our 13 principles of faith that the Rambam wrote for us and elaborated on, one of the major things that one has to believe is that Hashem knows what's in your heart. He knows what you think. He knows what you feel. Which obviously means that anyone that dipped into the mikveh knowing that they're not going to keep anything, they already are a heretic before they came in. Which means that Hashem will not gift you that precious soul. They go in there, Christina, and they come out, Christina. They go there as Mikey, and they come out, Mikey. Why? Because Hashem knows what's in your heart. That conversion is completely not valid. You could fool the people around you. You could even fool the righteous rabbis that believed you. But you cannot fool Hashem. So those people are not considered converts at all. If it's the next day you see them going back to their life, you see that's not a righteous conversion... Those children that come out of that woman that's, uh, you know, that was that tried fooling everyone are not considered Jewish at all uh, in any way, shape, or form. And as a matter of fact, she has put herself and this husband of hers into a horrendous situation where it's now called intermarriage. The same thing they tried fooling everyone by saying they're trying to avoid it by conversion, they're actually performing it. And the punishment... For intermarriage, intermarriage is karet. It's the worst possible punishment in Judaism. Cut off from the nation. Both for her, the fake convert, and for him, the Jew, that didn't really care enough to make sure that she's a righteous convert. They're both cut off, cutting their life in this world shorter. Also the Zohar Kadosh, which is also a critical part of the oral Torah, says that they're assured to lose their money, their sense of being, and obviously their share of the world to come. This is a very, very critical sin that they're performing into marriage at this point and also putting their children on the line where their children could actually die because of this. This is pure stupidity for anyone who does it because somehow they think they could fool Hashem. Now, on the other hand, if someone goes in there with righteous intentions, they plan on being religious... But somewhere along the way, just like it happens to, unfortunately, unfortunately, many Jews, natural born Jews, somewhere along the way, they stop keeping mitzvot, they start violating Shabbat, they uh, stop keeping kosher and things of that nature. They fall off the derech is what we call it. They fall off the right path. But they start off the right way. Then the conversion that they originally did is still valid. It's 100%. It went through. Once you're a Jew, you cannot undo it. You cannot do a conversion, then undo it. Even if a Jew converts or thinks they are trying to convert to Christianity or any other form of idol worship, they still remain a Jew, just that their status in Am Yisrael is on suspension. But they're still a Jew nonetheless and will be punished as a Jew. So a person that converts with right intentions will get this soul and just becomes a wicked Jew. This is a really big problem. But again, the original conversion is still valid. The children are still Jewish. And Bezat Hashem, the children at least, will be, uh, will be righteous one day. And hopefully the parents will do tshuva. So this is the case when it comes to original intentions. Because again, Hashem knows your heart. He knows what's in it. Now, the whole key of conversion and what we learn in this parasha and parashat shelach... We know that Moses sent the Miraglim, sent the spies to the uh, uh, land of Canaan, which is later to be called Israel, to see what's there. They wanted to check it out. He really didn't want to send them, but nonetheless, they pushed and pushed and they got their way. And we know what happened in this parasha where since they reported bad things on the, uh, on the land, 
10 out of the 12 spies were killed instantly with a plague by Hashem and the rest of the nation was punished to be in the desert and die in the desert over the next 40 years. The only two spies that were righteous were Joshua and Caleb. Now, the interesting part about this is that the ones that caused the problems throughout many of these 10 tests that this parasha mentions that Hashem said this nation of Israel has tested me already 10 times, many parts of these problems, whether it's the one from last week's parasha or from you know the, uh, the sin of the golden calf, or even right now, or this week's parasha, many of it was done by actually fake converts, which we call the Erev Rav, which were fake Egyptians that, were, that, wanted, that said they wanted to convert, but were all fake converts. And this caused a lot of problems. But nonetheless, later on in the Torah, in the Tanakh, in the book of Joshua, we see that Joshua, once he became a leader, also went on another trip became a spy again even though he was a leader himself he became a spy again to go scout out the land and over there they see that there there's many many armies and so on and then a woman comes up to them and the woman says i know that hashem has given you the land and the fear of you has fallen upon us and all the inhabitants of the land have dissolved because of you for we have heard how Hashem dried up the waters of the Sea of Reeds for you when you went forth from Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were across the Jordan, to Sichon and Og, the giant, whom you utterly destroyed. We have heard and our hearts melted. No spirit remained in any man because of you. For Hashem, your God, he is the God in the heaven above and on earth below. This was told by a woman named Rachav. When we learn the history of Rachav, it's literally breathtaking. Before this meeting with Joshua, the Gdolado, before meeting the first Jew in her life, Rachav was a prostitute and also handled, had her own prostitution house. There was no sin she didn't make. But later on in the Torah, because of what she said here, Hashem tells Joshua, I want you to marry Rachav. I want you to marry her. How could this be? Why would Hashem, out of all people in the world, want the Gdol Adol, the biggest giant of the generation after Moshe, to marry a former prostitute? How could this be? If a rabbi even married someone that was a Baal Tshuva today, they'd probably cut him off. A prostitute? The reason why is because if you notice at the end of the uh, sentence, the end of the uh, verse 11, she says, For Hashem your God, He is the God in the heaven above and on earth below. Why did she say this? Because she said in the beginning of the verse, We heard it and our hearts melted. Now we saw. We didn't see like you. We didn't see like Am Yisrael, the Dora Dea, the, the generation of knowledge that actually saw the words of Hashem in the sky. We just heard. And for that, for me, that was already enough for me to have Emunah, that He's the only God in the heaven above and anything below. This was so significant that she literally did something that to her was the equivalent of Akedat Yitzchak, the equivalent of the Akedat that, you know, Avram almost uh, sacrificed his own son Isaac. To her, she put everything on the line. She said, I'm putting my life on the line in your hands. I'll hide you. I'll do everything for you. Make sure that no one ever touches you. Why? Because I know your God is real. Because I heard. I only heard and that was enough for me. I had him unash lema on the spot. Because of that tshuva, Hashem accepted her not only as a tshuva, but he actually, she converted. Orthodox conversion, of course. And on top of that became not just a righteous Jew, but she married the Gdola Do, and eight prophets came out of her. Eight prophets. She gave birth to eight prophets. This is the difference between the righteous convert and the wicked one. When Hashem says, the righteous convert have special deal with me, anyone that even 
taunts them or pressures them, came, I will have a special revenge against them because I am their father and their mother. To the nation of Israel, the natural born Jews, I'm just their father. But to the convert, to the widow, or to the orphan, I'm their mother and their father. This is something significant that we need to learn. When you're a righteous convert, you have all the benefits you could possibly imagine. This is why King David in Tehilim, in Psalms 119, verse 19, says, King David says, I am a convert in the world. Hide not your commandments from me. Obviously, King David was not a convert. His great-grandmother, Ruth, was a convert. But in essence, what King David is telling us here is that he feels like he's a convert. He, is, he, doesn't, he doesn't know enough. He wants more. He wants more. He says, Hashem, don't hide your commandments from me. I want to fulfill your will. I want to be a righteous convert. I want to be on the level of a righteous convert. I want it. That's what a convert needs to know. That's what a convert needs to do. And this is the reason why that specific verse, Ki Hashem Elokechem Ua Elohim Bashemayim Ma'al Va'al Aretz Mitachat, which is what Rahab said, For Hashem your God, He is the God in the heaven above, on the earth, or the, and the earth below, this may sound familiar to you. We say it every single day, three times a day during our Alenu Shabeach prayer. Three times a day we say Alenu Shabeach. At the end of the first paragraph of Alenu Shabeach. There's a line that says exactly the same thing. Rahab was so significant that we have to think about her every day, to think about her righteousness every day, that there is no other God, not above, not below, there's nothing. If you're going to convert, do yourself a favor and be a righteous convert because your reward is endless. Whereas if you're a fake convert, your punishment and your spouse's punishment is also endless. And this is one of the major things that we need to understand. As for those that think that just because of this woman that's a fake convert, or because of this fake man, that's a, uh, this man that was a fake convert, Am Yisrael lost a potential spouse, that's completely false. Because everything that happens in this world, that means Hashem signs off on it. Which means that if a Jew was supposed to get a spouse, they're going to get a spouse. Hashem is not... You know, he's not running out of people. He can find them a spouse. Which means that anyone who does not have a spouse is because Hashem says you're not ready for one yet. But nonetheless, the problem here is not for that person who doesn't have a spouse. The problem is for one that has one. The one that has a spouse, but unfortunately, that spouse is not really Jewish and they're putting themselves on the line. If they don't do tshuva during their life, they're getting the worst possible punishment of karet. There's more to, ta- to cover about this, but for Chidush, I think this is the longest one. Thank you for learning Torah with me. May Hashem continue to bless you. Join our WhatsApp groups. We have many of them. Join our Facebook groups where there's thousands and thousands of people listening every day to the Shuret Torah that we have, the CDs. Everything is really going out there. And the ones that are seeking Hashem, just like it says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, if you look for me, with all of your heart and all of your soul, you'll find me. If you look for Hashem, whether you're a Gentile or a Jew, you'll find Him. And there's only one God. Kol Tuv, and may Hashem continue to bless you.